Hello and welcome to Sierra Make. I'm Sierra and for today's video we will be making these surgeon caps. It's a super simple design which I've put the pattern in the description down below right by the like and subscribe button. Please hit those if you're new to my channel. Hello. Um, the reason I decided to do surgeon caps for this video is because these caps used to be used just for surgery but with the whole COVID and pandemic thing going on um, it's become a part of the uniform for many hospital workers. So we will be making some of these for the hospital workers that I know and giving them to the giving it to them. Yeah. <laughs> so let's get into it. So here I have the pattern printed out. There's only two pieces to it. There's the top of it and then the sides of it. I've labeled what the front and the back of it is, as well as some little notes on what you should do. So we are just going to grab our cotton fabric. I decided to go with this blue fabric because I felt it was the most plain, but I will be making some out of the other fabrics as well. We will double up the fabric and place this folded edge on that folded edge. Like you can see what I'm doing right here, there's the fold edge and then there's the folded edge. And then I also realized I had enough fabric to make two of these, so I doubled up the top half of the fabric and I will be cutting out two of this pattern. So let's snip it. Yep. And I'm just going to quickly unpin that pattern and place it on the empty space and repin it and cut it out. While I'm doing that, I forgot to mention earlier that one of the reasons this cap has become a part of the uniform is normally they would wear disposable caps uh, when they go into the quarantined rooms, but those are becoming less available as time goes on, so these uh, fabric caps allow them to be sterilized and reused again and again. So now that our pieces are cut out, we are going to save this scrap fabric because I will be using it later on. And we're going to take the fabric pieces we cut out and sew those two curved edges to each other. Uh, I'm going to pin it first and then we will sew it up. Also, side note, in case you were wondering, this pattern was made using a pre-existing surgeon cap. Um, so that's why I don't have several sizes of it. It's actually kind of big just so you know so if you end up making this and you have a tiny head or no hair i recommend trying to make it a little bit smaller so because i was making this for hospital workers i wanted to try and make it a little bit fancy so i'm going to use the serger it has three to four threads and it makes really clean edges is the idea of it so luckily i found three threads that were relatively the same color that kind of matched the fabric that I was using. So I will be threading these onto the serger. You can see one of them's a little light and one of them's a little dark, but it's okay. To make that nice clean edge, I will be using the three thread serge stitch, which is kind of hard to say, and using the left needle. So I will have to thread the left needle and the upper and lower looper. So I major lucked out and the serger was already threaded for the three thread serge stitch so i use a trick that we use on the embroidery machine where i just took the two different threads and i cut them and i tied them together so that i could just pull the thread through the machine carefully of course and it would pull the thread that i wanted through the machine threading it for me basically, if that makes any sense. Anyways, we did a test strip like usual uh, to make sure that the tension was all correct and I knew what I was doing. Answer is, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> the test strip had something wrong, so I just kind of followed these instructions. It looked like the upper looper thread was too loose, so I tried to... Uh, tighten it but I don't know the tension ended up being the same that I started with and then somehow it fixed itself I don't know what I did differently I mean that kind of looks right anyways we will just skip on ahead now we are just going to serge around the top of the hat that part we had pinned you can also use a zigzag stitch if you don't have a serger obviously and we will 
follow that stitch all around the top and then once we reach the back of it we will follow it down the back and then around the bottom half of the hat finishing at the back of the hat just like a figure eight all right it's a little bit ugly but moving on now i'm going to take that scrap fabric that we had saved and i'm going to cut strips out of it to make bias tape for around the uh forehead part of the cap this way the bias tape will match the hat and it'll look all cohesive i like the method of folding up the fabric to get a small rectangle and then cutting that edge to get like a really nice clean evenly sized strip i wish i had done that for the first one that i cut out but oh well and I just cut out as many strips as I could. So with these strips, I also have a little bias tape maker. Super convenient. Um, sorry if you don't have one. There, You can just iron this in a way that tries to fold it. But that'd just be really difficult. Uh, I recommend using pre-made bias tape if you don't have a bias tape maker. Anyways, um, so I put it through the little... Uh, triangle thing and I'm ironing it flat and basically what happens is it takes that strip and folds it just like bias tape is folded and then you iron it to really press it down and get that nice little strip like you can see right here that first strip of bias tape was using the longest strip that I had cut so now I just have the short strips so what I did is I sewed them together, and I'm just going to iron that seam flat open. Oh man, I sewed this one the opposite way. I am a dum-dum. Uh, whoops. <laughs> I guess I better fix that first before I iron open the second seam. But once it's fixed, now it's time to put it through the bias tape maker, making sure that that ironed open seam is facing upward so that it gets folded onto the inside of the bias tape. By the way, this second strip is going to go on the second hat, so you don't need to make it if you're just making one. Yay, we're finally on the last step, which is putting the tape onto the bottom of the hat. So what we're going to do is we are going to measure halfway between the tape and then the front of the hat and we are going to pin that part to the hat and then we will just start at the very end of the tape and start sewing it together until we reach the hat and then sew the hat into it and then all the way around. Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about here. I'm using a straight stitch and I'm just starting at the end of the tape and sewing it together and then I'm going all the way down and then once I reach that first corner I'm sewing in the hat and just continuing on and then all the way off the hat so that the tape is all sewn up. Ta-da! Here are the end result hats. I suppose I could have used some extra leftover strip to make bias tape to put on the back of the hat but the original didn't have that so I didn't do it and I think it it's fine it doesn't look terrible um <laughs> it's really interesting because the fabric's actually a little stretchy I didn't realize this when I picked it but that kind of is nice because then if it's too small you can stretch it around your head Here's what the back of the cap looks like. Sorry that the camera is out of focus, but now I will try it on for you. This is the end of the video so if you haven't already please subscribe and comment down below if this video was helpful thank you for watching um so ooh, i don't know how <laughs> keep all i don't i don't know okay, oh i'm gonna pay stitches there we go. Okay. I don't know. Gosh dang nabbit.